the summary of the Maimah that begins on Memvava Medalid. It takes the quote from the end of the parsha that says, Ani Hashem Lekeichem Hashem Sisi Eschem Eretz Mitzrayim, Ani Hashem Lekeichem. And now we know that Ani Hashem suggests that Hashem is, is repaying us. So we have a few questions. What is this schar? And why does it say Ani Hashem twice? Now we have a rule that Ayyem La Saisam Olamach Lekabal Schadim. And here in this physical world, we do our work and the reward is in the time to come. So we explain that the physical manifestation of pleasures, tainig, and again, pleasures is a shallow word, but of enjoyments, whether it's of the senses, the visual or the tangible, whatever it is, it's really the, uh, the, the sort of psoilus, the leftovers, a very shallow representation of the essential godliness that is higher than something that can be appreciated here in this physical world. That just like we have a rule that there's no blade of grass which does not have uh, a malach directing it and causing it to grow. Similarly, whatever goes on in this, spirit, in this physical world, the pleasures of food or music and so forth are actually the product of the spiritual manifestations uh, of the spiritual alignment that we are not uh, ready to appreciate. And this is uh, indicated in the idea of digestion. We take in the food and our body goes to work to identify the healthy parts, nutrients, and to discard the waste. Similarly, we engage in the physical world, hopefully in ultimate uh, pursuit of finding the, uh, the spiritual character, not being distracted only by the physical. And this is what's indicated in, in the uh, lead up to the Shema, where we talk about how the Eifanim are barash godol. They are in great clamoring in contrast to the Srafim. Why are they in great clamoring? Because they're longing for godliness. And we have this great clamoring that we are lo longing for godliness. We are able to overcome the distraction of the immediate spiritual and rather find the eternal um, uh, 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 spiritual. Now, we have the word shin ayin resh, which can be read as shar or the same form, but it can be read as sar. If we use the vowel on the left side, it becomes the word for hair. And both of them are indications as to how we come close with Hashem. Shar is a gate. Zahar shar la Hashem. This is the gateway allows us into Hashem. Sar is a hair. A hair represents the mildest glimpse into holiness, like the hairs which are expressed from the brain, but don't feel any pain when you cut them because they are a very uh, muted form of, div of divine godliness. So we hope to, to receive the shar coming through the gate, but we often get only the sar. And this is represented in the various stages of Ganeidim. And this is manifest somewhat ironically in mitzvahs maesias, in actual mitzvahs. As we see as an example, if a person does an Avera, they not only damage themselves in their relationship with Hashem, but it's as if they damage Hashem himself. And how do they reinstate it? Through carbonis. Now, we point out, isn't this ironic, that a carbon is made from an animal, which is something of Gashmis. And not only is it of Gashmis, but it's of a Gashmis that is of a lesser developed quality than the human being. So how can the animal reinstate the human being's relationship with Hashem and repair the Yudke Vavke that has been damaged through Aveva? So we explain because uh, the animal, which is manifestly less evidently developed godly and spiritual than the human being, is an indicator that it is innately the product of a loftier level of godliness. And this loftier level of godliness manifests itself in the physical animal through which it is thus transformed and elevated by identifying its innate godliness that is a level that is higher than what the human being was able to accomplish on his own, it is the level of das that is higher than das that uh, reinstates his relationship with Hashem. And this now ties us into the idea of the tzitzis, that tzitzis is both levels. On the one hand, it is the shar, it is a mitzvah, and every mitzvah is an actual alignment with the infinity of Hashem. More profoundly, even than Torah study, which only gives us a glimpse based on our limited capacity to understand. Concurrently, tzitzis is also like the sar, the hairs, like the strings, which represent all of the characteristics of godliness, but muted to the point that we may not even sense that there's any godliness there. So the tzitzis is the gamach of 613, like we know the word, plus the knots and the strings. So it is the very essence of Hashem. 
And concurrently, it is a very minor or very shallow muted glimpse into it. And this is why we say twice, Ani Hashem Alekechem, in the end of the Parsha of Tzitzis. One for the full-on level of godliness that we will experience only in the time of Tchiyas HaMesim, and a second for that which we are able to experience only at that very, again, shallow level at that uh, initial relationship with Hashem.